Welcome to this screencast. My name is Gonzalo Ferrer and this work about human motion prediction in crowded environments was presented at the ICRA conference uh, 2014 in Hong Kong. Uh, this work was done under the supervision of Professor Sanfeliu at the Institute of Robotics in Barcelona. So as the motivation, our initial objective uh, before doing this research is robot navigation in urban environments but we uh, need to overcome two major problems one is a perception system and the second if we want an intelligent navigation is a, an accurate prediction model so in this in this scene there's robot and there's people walking in this scene so we want to use uh, this information to build a more intelligent navigation. What happens when there's more people in this end, as in this other picture? Well, we realize that there are complex and simultaneous interactions taking place, and we want to model it uh, and provide a, a useful tool for the future uh, robot navigation and other tracking system. So, the scheme of our proposed work is, as you can see, we have a set of inputs uh, that are a set of trajectories, each one for each uh, detected and tracked person in the ascent, and each trajectory is a set of uh, positions over time. We are considering that our tracking system is providing this information. In this work, I won't talk about detection and tracking, and that's uh, a real problem in when we go, go outside, but for this work, uh, I won't talk about it. When we can use this information, this pos position in trajectories, uh, for calculating the most expectable destination, that is calculating the intentionality of each person in the ascent. Um, this work is not described here. We have used the, um, its results and it's described in more detail in this publication. Uh, another calculation of um, this variable is the calculation of the behavior estimation. Um, we are just briefly, we are presenting the, what behavior is. Uh, imagine this situation when, where the centered person tries to get to some place and this exact configuration uh, is taking place at the time. So what, what we are defining by different um, person's behavior is that uh, in this same situation we believe that uh, different people may react differently. So for instance, we have this uh, reaction and other reactions that uh, could overcome on, on different future trajectories. So we want to model this different uh, this difference of behavior between different pe persons on uh, this same situation. So um, once we have calculated the intentionality prediction and the behavior estimation, we I will explain later how can we use this information to provide a more accurate trajectory prediction and its covariance and up to a certain time horizon. So um, to this end we are using the social force model proposed by Helving uh, a long time ago and we are extended this model to the to to consider robots. So just briefly, the social force model treats persons as two-dimensional particles and the trajectories of these uh, particles is defined by uh, forces. So this force is, com is composed of a steering force that is someone tries to get to some destination that is an attractive force and also uh, interaction forces that are repulsive forces with other obstacles or agents in this sense. So for the steering force, um, just imagine we have uh, this uh, situation in this scene. There's a set of destinations. Uh, each destination may be uh, an interesting place like uh, a door, some stairs, 
a leaf or whatever a person uh, typically goes to and we want to infer which is the most likely destination that this centered person is trying to reach so we, cal we model it as this probability according to the observations uh, for more details it is explained here in this journal publication and at the end using uh, this work we can provide um, a, a measure a probability of which is the most likely destination this person is trying to get to so using this information and according to this formula we calculate the force that uh, attracts the person to this destination and what happens when there's other targets in the ascent like other persons or other things well then yeah, we model it as interaction forces between between some targets in these forces are repulsive forces and they are described by this equation it is uh, an exponential function and depends on on several values so we can have uh, interactions between persons and persons or obstacles and persons they will all, they would also exert uh, some force on, on this trajectory and and also interactions between a robot and a person that's why we extended this social force model to include robots so for each one we have a summation that have different parameters of this exponential function and the summation of all those interacting forces and the steering force um, is the resultant force that uh, describes the future movement of this of this person so now I will introduce the behavior definition or our definition of behavior as I said before these interaction forces are described by a set of parameters we call we will call them this set of parameters a theta parameter just to include all, all of them and these parameters typically on the extended social force model uh, depend on the nature of the target for for instance we have a set of parameters for person and person interaction person and obstacle and, per and person and robot the problem of this model is that we observed on previous work uh, works uh, height variability in human motion prediction and with the behavior estimation we want to overcome this uh, problem so as explained before um, these interactions we believe that they, they in this, this same situation they respond to different outcomes and that's because there's some some behaviors inherent to all, all the person that model differently these interaction so here this pair of interactions have different outcome we are modeling different behaviors as uh, different interaction forces so higher interaction would, would become a uh, higher interaction in interacting vectors and so on so at the end we define a set of behaviors uh, for, for each set of parameters of the theta um, they are independently of the nature of, of the target and we calculate them only based on observations of past trajectories so the equations of the interacting summation is simplified it now not, does not depend on three summatories depending on the nature of the interacting um, target but only one and we should calculate uh, before the corresponding behavior between each pair of, of targets so here's an example of how we can calculate the behavior estimation in this example we are observing the red person just doing some trajectory um, since we are observing their its position over time we can calculate its second derivative that is it its acceleration and we know that this acceleration is proportional to the, the force to some force that is the, uh, uh, we will call them the observed force so we can also calculate the most expectable destination according to our uh, our previous uh, results in other work and according to the social force model we can calculate <coughs> the interaction forces that take place in the ascent 
Um, if this model is completely accurate, then the summation of the steering force and the interaction force, force should be the same as the observed force. But uh, we see that the subtraction of the observed force and the goal force is not exactly the interaction force, and thus we are observing uh, some uh, mismatch between these uh, estimated and these observed interaction forces, and we use this uh, uh, to model a likelihood function as a Gaussian function depending on the, on the model of this difference. So we can calculate this difference for different behaviors that their outcome are different interaction forces and using this uh, likelihood, likelihood function we can update the values of the behavior estimation according to a Haydn Markov model at each at, um, at each time at each instant instant of time. So now the question is uh, okay that's good we can enhance the interacting forces the interaction forces uh, provide a more accurate model but how can we know uh, which are the behaviors in this end. Well, to this end we have designed uh, uh, some method. We calculate a large set of data parameters according to small observations of a target and an interacting target in SN. And once we have a large number of these uh, data parameters, we use uh, an expectation maximization algorithm to cluster them. So, um, applying this technique, we observe three different behaviors, and this uh, figure, this function corresponds to the plot to accord to the model of the inter interacting force with respect to the distance to the interacting target. We see that um, they fit well to the three different behaviors. So, once we have calculated the int intentionality prediction that is, which is the best destination and the behavior estimation that give, gives us uh, a better estimation of the interacting forces we can use this information to provide motion prediction so we treat each uh, target so the state of each target would correspond to a position and a velocity and its propagation is constrained by some differential equations like this one that depends on its inner state uh, and as input we provide an acceleration we calculate this acceleration uh, by using the extended social force model and behavior calculation so it's just uh, a straightforward application of the social force model where we are calculating a steering force and the interaction forces in the ascent. So, for one target, we'll have this example. We are propagated, propagating the the particle until we get to some destination. We are also propagating uh, the corresponding covariance associated to the to the state of the nth target, and we do it until we get to that destination or uh, a time horizon. So what happens when there's several targets in the ascent? Well, hiding in this equation is the fact that the forces, the acceleration that is the input of this propagation depend depends on the position of other of, of other targets simultaneously. So we need to jointly calculate all those propagated positions and then we can calculate the force that um, is governing these movements so it must be done jointly for all the targets in this end so regarding the experiments uh, the first part corresponded to the obtention of these uh, classes, these behaviors we ask 40 volunteers to walk naturally to uh, one destination and meanwhile they were in that there were some interactions taking place but we made sure that only one interaction at a time took place so first was 
between a, a person and a person and then a robot and a person. Um, after the obtaining this, this data, we observe three different behaviors and unaware behavior in blue that corresponds to all those persons that try to stay away as far as possible from the interacting target. They were extremely cautious. Uh, we observe the unaware behavior in green, that is the opposite behavior. They were just ignoring the interacting target and most of the times going through them or really close to them. It is interesting results uh, and we can use this calculation uh, to provide a more intelligent navigation. We want to detect these behaviors since they are potentially um, danger, dangerous and a, a third behavior is the balance behavior in red that is between those uh, extreme cases. So here's an example of how we get the information in this uh, first step of the experiments. This person is trying to get to some destination, to that final destination, and there's some interactions taking place first with a person and then with a robot. We are calculating here the motion propagation. We'll put again in the video. We are calculating here the motion propagation of the target as well as we are inferring the, the behavior estimation but, well, the experiment was as simple as this only one interaction at a time and the person tried to walk naturally to that destination so the second part of the experiment was the testing part we were teleoperating the robot in a typically urban environment uh, people in this scene um, were not told about our experiment, they were just walking to their classes or to other places naturally and we were recording uh, all the information the, of uh, positions of other persons in this scene and we proceeded uh, afterwards offline. So we have compared these our results with a short-term prediction, the way of measuring the results. Um, we compared the prediction and the real position up to a certain time and if this uh, position was within one meter of the real trajectory then we returned true and if not it was false. So the performance for um, short-term prediction was uh, quite close for three of them but we see that this accuracy degradates over time for the short-term prediction while the using social force prediction and in green and uh, the green line and also using behavior estimation on the dot uh, red line um, maintained their accuracy over time so we can provide and that's a good thing um, reliable uh, future pre pre predictions of trajectories up to um, a certain time horizon with um, reliability. So here's a video um, about the testing. We were just wandering around with the robot and some persons when were walking there in the sand. We were recording their positions and now processing the future predictions and their corresponding behavior between the robot and all the persons in this sand. So as a conclusion um, I have presented and to sum up, I have presented a human motion prediction and a behavior estimation in social environments. Uh, I have demonstrated that using uh, this behavior estimation and intentionality prediction, that is uh, the destinations calculating the most likely destination in this sense, greatly enhances uh, prediction performance. And three different behaviors were observed, uh, unaware, a balance, and and unaware. It is especially interesting the unaware behavior since it can be potentially dangerous for the robot and we want to detect these kind of behaviors and react accordingly. All these methods were tested in real environments and we obtained quite good results. 
thank you for your attention and you have if you have any question please contact me or visit my webpage thanks